Hello. In 2018 or thereabouts, I was making a lot of video tutorials around different kinds of things you can make with code that weren't processing or P5.js. And I am ready to do some of that again. In particular, I am going to make a series about how to code a Discord bot in JavaScript with Node.js. So I wanted to take a minute for this in what you're watching right now to refresh my old workflow series. If you've watched those, great. Maybe skip this one. Or if this is totally new to you, if you have never programmed outside of P5.js or processing, this is the video for you because I'm gonna show you terminal access and I'm gonna show you how to install Node and how to create your first Node.js project. And the videos that follow will hopefully cover in more detail like why you would want to do that in terms of making a Discord bot or some other kind of web server or, or project. I should say that I am on a Mac, and unfortunately what I'll be showing you on my screen is restricted to Mac. When possible, I will try to show you screenshots and uh, captures of the equivalent on Windows, but at a minimum, if you go to the video description, if you go to thecodingtrain.com, the webpage associated with this video, I will include additional information for the equivalent kinds of things that you might wanna do on Windows if you're on Windows. Because I know most of you are on Windows, but I'm on a Mac. So here, the concepts will be the same. My enthusiasm will be the same. So hopefully this will be helpful to you. If not, you could just skip to the next video or a different one. It's fine, you don't, you don't have to stay. I made a list of what I'm going to cover, so you also could kind of look in the time codes and skip to whichever part is of most interest to you. So I'm gonna go over terminal, shell, what is node, and using a text editor like Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna cover all those things in this video. I will not be covering Git, although that is, uh, what is Git and all of that, that is a big part of how I work also outside of the P5 web editor and processing. So if that interests you, make a, make a note to, to me in the comments, encouraging me to refresh my old Git and GitHub for Poets series, which was probably recorded in like 2016 at this point. So that, that really needs an update. If you're a computer user like me, you probably like to make files and open programs and click around and drag windows and type stuff. You're used to operating your computer with the graphical user interface, whether it's Windows, Mac, etc. I want to open a window to the computer soul for you. <laughs> I want to show you how to operate your computer in, in interface with the operating system, do everything you could possibly ever do on your computer, but through text only based commands. And the way that you do that is through terminal access. Now, if you watch any of my Apple II videos, you'll know there are computers that just open immediately to a terminal prompt, a text prompt where you, if you wanna do anything, you've gotta type in the commands. My computer does not. However, built into the Mac under Applications Utilities is a nice little program called Terminal. So you could go and open that up. On Windows, you might do Start Command. There's something called PowerShell. The syntax will be different. I'll, I'll try to address that as I get a little further along here. But for me, I like to use a different piece of software uh, called iTerm. So any terminal application will do. Terminal is the piece of software that you run on your computer that opens up that terminal prompt for you to type a text command. If you're trying to follow along and you're on a Mac, go ahead and download this right now and run it. This is what it's gonna look like. Now, Mac OS is actually a flavor. It's built on top of the Unix operating system, a very well-known, tried and true, olden times operating system I developed in the late 60s, early 70s at Bell Labs. And there are a slew of of standard Unix commands that uh, I'm not, obviously not gonna teach you all of them. I'll include some links of where you can look them up, but here are some basic ones. For example, if I type in echo and then some text, echo is like print and it will print it back out to the terminal window for me. I could also type PWD. That stands for print working directory. And it's telling me the folder I'm in on my computer is slash users slash teaching. I could also type CD, change directory. Maybe I wanna to go to the desktop. Now I'm on the desktop and I could type LS for list, which will show me everything that's on the desktop. I can give it an argument, LS-all, and it's going to give me the listing of everything on the desktop, but with some more information about permissions and file size and date and all that stuff. I can also do command K which will clear the terminal window for me and make it all nice and fresh where I could just start over again at the top. Those are some basic Unix commands. Now, there is also this concept called shell. So while I'm in the terminal software, the place where I can type the commands, this is all based on Unix, the operating system, 
the shell is the command line interface to that operating system itself. And there are different kinds of shells. They have all sorts of funny names like Born and Corn and Bash and <laughs> list, list your favorite shell in the comments. Mac OS uh, by default, didn't used to be the case, comes with the ZSH shell installed. One of the reasons why I love ZSH is you can have plugins for it as well as themes. And I love a good theme, especially if it's rainbow colored. I like to use something called Oh My ZSH, which is a, and I agree, delightful open source community and framework for managing your shell's configuration. So you don't need to use this. You could do everything without it. You might have a different one that you love. Somebody else might recommend one to you. Go for it. Just have fun with your shell, color, theme it however you want. Let me know in the comments, but I'm gonna show you if you wanna use exactly what I'm using, how to install this one. So I can click here on this button, install Oh My ZSH, and it's gonna show me this kind of scary looking thing. So I should mention, if you ever see, oh, just run this shell script install thing in your terminal, pause for a moment, ask the question, is this a trusted source? This is not something you just wanna willy nilly just copy paste shell install scripts from anywhere into your terminal. They could wreak havoc, uh, it could be malicious, all sorts of things could arise uh, uh, there. But I happen to know I've used this one. This is the oh my ZSH install script. Um, I don't wanna get into all the details about what all these things mean. I will mention that that word curl there, that's a good one for you to know. Curl is a command line utility that allows you to fetch data from another server. In this case, we're fetching a file, text file called install.sh that has a whole bunch of shell commands in it and all of those shell commands install the theme. So. Uh, without getting into it too more, all I need to do is hit copy, go back to my iTerm window. You could use terminal, whatever you're using. I'm gonna hit paste, and then I'm gonna hit enter. And look at that, already I see a rainbow of color of oh my ZSH. There's some more information here. Something really important is this .zshrc file. That is essentially your configuration file for your shell. That's gonna come up as I start to install some things later. But I'm just gonna wipe the window clean with Command K. I have a lovely blue indicating what folder I'm in right now, which is the desktop. Now, I'm ready to install Node.js. What Node is, I'll come back to in a little bit. I'm gonna walk through how to make your first Node project, but now let's just look at installing. Installing Node, a JavaScript runtime, I'll explain what that means in a bit, is as easy as going to nodejs.org and downloading the version for your operating system. I do wanna mention that the tutorials that I'm going to make, I will be using Node 18.18, .18, which includes some features that are necessary for the code that I will write. So that's probably the one you wanna use, though I, you're welcome to try a later version, one of the, the 21 apparently is the current version with the latest features. In addition to just downloading the installer that's on the Node website, there's a wonderful tool that I like to use called NVM, or Node Version Manager. This is a separate command line tool from Node, uh, not to be confused with something called NPM, which I will get to. There's a lot a lot of commands and things that I want to do with Node. NVM is separate from Node. It is just a utility that will install and maintain multiple versions of Node on your computer, which I sometimes need to do because I have a project that's compatible with an earlier version. I want to move back and forth. I'm helping students and they have this version. Let me test it. So you don't necessarily need to, but let me show you how NVM works. I think NVM is technically available on Windows, but you might have, a, it's maybe a little bit more difficult to get it running there. So if you're on Windows, I might just go and install Node directly. I'm going to Click here to install script. You can see here's another one of these like, oh, just curl this thing, grab this shell script and run it. I'm choosing to decide that this is trustworthy and this will allow me to install uh, NVM properly. Copy, back to my terminal, paste, enter. Now it's telling me that NVM is already installed. Uh, that's because I already had it installed. Uh, and it is also saying that it's appending NVM source string to user slash teaching dot ZSHRC. So this is important. When you install a new command line utility, it's going to put some things in that ZSHRC file. So what might happen to you, I'm gonna type NVM right now. And oh, oh, I'm so glad this happened. I wasn't sure if it would, but it actually told me command not found. 
The reason it's not found is because it's newly installed and the shell isn't aware of it yet. So a quick thing I could do is just like open up a new window. <laughs> like if I open up a new shell window, I just hit command N and I type NVM. Now I can see, oh, it's, it's telling me all sorts of stuff about what I can do in NVM. But back here, if I didn't want to open up a new window, I can reload that configuration file. The way that I do that is by saying source, and then I know, happen to know that configuration file is in slash user slash teaching. That's my home directory. A shorthand for my home directory is tilde slash, and then the name of that file, which is dot zshr. And by the way, if you're typing in a file name and uh, you want terminal to auto complete it for you, you can often hit tab. It only had one more letter left, but I hit tab and it did it. So now I'm going to type that. I'm going to enter that that reloaded the configuration, essentially restarted the shell. And now if I type NVM, it's there. So what do I want to do once I have NVM? You can see there's lots of commands here, install, use, run, exec, alias. Uh, I encourage you to look through the readme on the GitHub website about all, how all this works. Pretty much what I want to show you how to do is just use it to install a node. So I want to say NVM install, 18.18. .18. I don't have to say node. The only thing NVM installs is node, but I do want to give it the version. Uh, I'm going to say 18.18. .18. Let's see what happens. It's already installed because I already did this. Um, I could just show you like I could install like an older version. It's already installed. I could install an even older version. And now look, it's downloading and installing it. So you can see you can install you can install with a specific version or just like the major number, like 15 or 16, and it'll pick the last version of that, which is 15.14.0. Now what I could do is I could say NVM list, and this is gonna show me, there's some other stuff here, but basically look, I have version 15, 16, 18.0, 18.2, 18 20.8.0. And actually what's important here, even though it's kind of maybe hard for you to see with this blue color, the default is set to 18.18. .18. I've already set it up that way. Uh, I'll put on the screen what the command is to set the default. But uh, since I've already set it up that way and that's the one I want to use, I can type NVM use. I could give the number, but in this case, I'm going to say default. And now it's using node version 18. Before it was using 15, because you can see that's highlighted in green. And I can confirm that by actually executing our first node command, node dash dash version. So typically with anything like NVM, node, curl, these command line utilities, there's the name of the command and then arguments to it. And different commands have different syntaxes with dashes and et cetera. So I don't know how to be comprehensive about that, but here I'm saying, hey, node, tell me what version you are. And version 18.18.2. .18 so I am good to go. The next thing that you will need to start your first Node.js project is a code editor, somewhere where you're going to be able to type the code. Now, to, to be the truth of the matter is, you can actually get a code editor right here in Terminal. And one of the ones that I love is something called Nano. But there's Vim and VI and all sorts of other esoteric, interesting, strange tools you can use right there in Terminal. You can use Notepad, you can use TextEdit, anything will do. I happen to, these days, be using a code editor called Visual Studio Code. Uh, it is a product of Microsoft. Um, it integrates well with a lot of the other things that I'm doing. It has some great features. So I'm going to show it to you. You're welcome to follow along. But again, you could use whatever you want. If you're using a different code editor, you have your own favorite one, please let me know in the comments. I like to hear those things. Step one is to download and install it for your operating system. I'm going You know, pause the video if you want to do that while you're following along. I've already installed it. And there it is, Visual Studio Code. Now. Visual Studio Code is something, you know, I could probably be here for the next six hours going through all of the features and possibilities and configuration settings. I am not the most adept at Visual Studio Code and all of the like latest and greatest on the bleeding edge things you can do with it. I'm just an old man trying to use a modern text editor to write some code. But I am gonna show you a few things. The very first thing is let's just look at the Visual Studio Code preferences. Now, extensions is going to be something very important. There are so many extensions and add-ons you can, you can install into Visual Studio Code. I'll show you a couple, but let's first go to settings, which I can also get to with command comma. And maybe the first thing that I want to do is right here, just make the font size bigger, which maybe you don't want to do, but I really have trouble seeing. These progressive lenses only get me so far. Plus, I'm recording a video tutorial, so let's make this bigger. Now, you don't see anything yet, but you're going to in a minute because I'm going to make a new file, new text file. 
So soon I'll get into more about uh, how to open a directory of files and configure a project, but let's just pretend for the moment that I am going to save this file on my desktop and call it choo-choo.js. And in this text file, I am going to write a little bit of code. Now, on purpose, I've made this kind of horrific to look at. I'm having a, a slight mild uh, amount of panic right now. Not to worry, I'm going to show you one of the most wonderful extensions you can get for Visual Studio Code, and it is called Prettier. This button over here on the left is for extensions. And you can see some recommended ones, some popular ones. I have none installed. Again, I, I did wipe my Visual Studio Code settings before I started so I could show you these steps. I'm going to type in prettier. I'm going to click on it, and we can see more information here about the code formatter prettier. I am going to hit install. It is now installed. I'm going to go back to my file, and now I want to issue a prettier command that will reformat all of the indentation and everything in my code. One of the ways you can execute any possible thing that you could ever do in Visual Studio Code is through the command palette. So most things are available through the interface. There's view, selection, run, et cetera. You can see here, right, where was that? Command palette, shift command P. This now is a giant list of all sorts of things you can do in Visual Studio Code. You can see the two that I use of what I intend to show you are already at the top because I've recently used them, but I can just search for one. Like I want to search for formatting document. I'm going to click format. Ah, look at this. It's telling me to configure a default formatter. I forgot about that. So what I want to do is I want Prettier, the extension, to format my code. So let's click on configure and I'm going to pick Prettier. And then look at that, it made it all pretty for me. Let's pretend for a moment this was a P5.js sketch, just so there's a little bit more code. Let me format that again. Beautiful. I don't really wanna have to run that format command every single time I want to. I just want it to auto format every time I save. Guess what? There is a format code on save preference. It's somewhere in here, but I'm not sure where. Luckily, with all of these preferences and settings, there's so many of them, I can actually search for something. So let me just type in format. And, oh, it came up, editor, format on save. So let me click this. And now I am going to add some more code. I'm gonna hit save and the code auto-formatted. I know I'm spending a lot of time on auto-formatting the code, but it's one of these things that brings me a great deal of pleasure in life, so please, indulge me. Another setting I really like to have on is render white space. So right now, I don't actually know, is this a tab, is that a space, how many? If I select it, you can kind of see those dots there, and I actually always like to see the dots. So if I go back to those settings, and I look for render white space, I can select all as the option. And now you can see those little gray dots everywhere there is white space. I'm showing you how to configure all of the settings in the preferences settings menu, but that's actually not the way that I do it. There happens to be a file called settings.json that includes all of your settings in JavaScript object notation for you. You can find it by going to the settings, command, comma, and then clicking on this icon right up here, if I click on this, open settings JSON, this brings me to this. And by the way, it's look at it. It's saying my default formatter is prettier. Uh, format on save is true. Render white space all font size 32. So you can always already see these are all of the settings that I've set. It's not formatted the way I like. So if I hit command S, <gasps> wait a second, it's not changing it. What's with the four spaces? Well, I've got good news for you. Before I wiped my settings, I created a GitHub gist, which is a nice way of just dropping in a text file to save uh, as part of my GitHub account, uh, settings.json. You can see it right here, and I can just grab all of this, copy it, go right back into my settings.json file, paste it in, hit save. Oh, you can see it changed the font size because I actually had it at 24, but let's change that back to 32, hit save again. You can see it auto formatted the JSON file and I've got some other things like I prefer a single quote style, many, many, many more things. So 
please let me know what setting am I missing here. I will include as part of the materials that go along with this video, check the description, a settings.json file that you can copy paste if you want to use the same exact settings that I'm using. Couple more things to show you about Visual Studio Code before I wrap this video up. One thing that I really love to do is use the code command from terminal. So what am I even talking about? Let me go back to that command palette and you can see there, shell command, install code command in path. Now that might not show up first for you. Just search for shell and you'll see the only two options are install or uninstall. I'm gonna click install code command in path. I'll talk to you about what that means in a minute. Let's just do it first. Shell command code successfully installed in path. To add the equivalent code command to your path on Windows, there's actually a setting during the Visual Studio Code install. So I'll include information on how to do that and show you a screenshot of where that setting is right here next to me. What is the path? Everything that I've been running in terminal, like when I type NVM, that command is available to me because it's part of the path. The path is the uh, environment variable on the computer. We're gonna talk more about environment variables when I get into making a Discord bot. That stores all the folders and directories and places on your computer where there are commands that you might wanna execute through the shell in terminal. So the fact that this new command code was installed in the path means I can just type the word code anywhere into terminal. Guess what that did? It opens Visual Studio Code. So that might not seem too exciting because I could just open Visual Studio Code by you know clicking on the application icon, but this is what I use it for. Let's look at what folders are on my desktop. I've got a folder that's called NOC book. That's for the Nature of Code book project that I'm working on, a syllabus. There's a folder for a syllabus. There's the codingtrain.com website, lots of stuff. I'd right now really like to look at all of the files that are in the codingtrain.com, that folder that has all the source code for the Coding Train's website. Guess what I can do? I can type in code, and then I can type in the name of that folder. I can tab complete it. I can hit enter, and all of a sudden, I have now a new Visual Studio Code window open that has along the left this directory tree of all the files inside that folder. I was able to open the codingtrain.com project in Visual Studio Code directly through one command. I can also do that through file open folder. For example, I could go to the desktop now and pick the nature of code book directory and now you're seeing this. I'm gonna close this file. I don't wanna make any changes to it. I'm gonna close these files. I'm gonna close the Nature of Code book workspace. And I'm back now to just this single file. Now, this is me typing some P5JS code into a JavaScript text file on the desktop of my computer. I could build this out into a full P5 sketch that I run and from Visual Studio Code and host locally. That's something that I try to, I'm sure I've done that in another video somewhere. I'll link to it if I can remember. That's not where I'm going right now. This isn't any code that I could run. The next thing I want to do is show you how to actually run JavaScript code with Node. What does it mean that Node is a runtime for JavaScript? And what does it mean to run Node scripts as well as build out Node projects? I'm going to put that into a separate video. We will follow directly from this one in a playlist or a track that's on the Coding Train website for making a Discord bot. So uh, if you want to learn about that, I'll see you there.